Hello, I'm Dave Turner, Sales Director of Beaker Associates. In this short video, I'm going to walk through the features of our loop powered indicators, just showing you the depth of configuration that's possible and the features that are available within our whole range of products. I'm using my demo case, but for the four to 20 milliamp products. So this is generating four to 20, but these are displaying the four to 20. What I'm showing you with the P&E configuration is the same, very similar. We keep that whole similar pattern for all of our products. So once you've learned about how the basics for the four to 20 PE up and down arrow configuration works, then you're good to go on many of our other products. So firstly, in normal operation, the buttons, the down arrow will show you the configuration of the at four milliamps. So we have it set at zero here. The up arrow will show you what the configuration is at 20 milliamps, and we have it at 100. P gives you the loop milliamps or the loop percentage. E is only used in normal operation when you have the tear function initiated. So to configure the product, we press the P and E button together to enter the menu. And then we have a series of up and down arrows to then look at the high level of the menu. So first stop is function and P to program. Now to drill down into the options, we have linearizer, which is for nonlinear inputs. We have standard for straight line four to 20 milliamp relationships. And then we have a square root extractor. Where you leave the screen to, and then press escape, that is what is set. So if I left it on root and escaped, it would be there on square root extractor. So I'm gonna press escape now because I'm on standard. The next level in the menu is resolution. So this is the last digit where we can subdue any digit roll. So to program, you can have a choice of either incrementing on one, two, five, or 10. So this would stay a permanent zero. I'll go back to one. So escape, and that's where it will leave it. Next section is decimal point position. So we can then move the position of the decimal point to the required position. Escape from that, and then we have calibrate. Now this will allow you to inject a precision source and configure the engineering units at zero and maximum. That's great if you wish to do that or a fill a tank, empty a tank, and then set the capacity of it. But we have one better than that, we have set. Set does not require a precision input, it need, requires just anything between four milliamps and 20 milliamps to power the product. And so you can then configure the zero. So we had it set at, 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 at zero, but I can now change that to 100, or I could set it to a negative value. So I can have minus 200 for say an example. So escape. Now obviously span, this is what the engineering units would need to be for 20 milliamps, so to program that. Let's say make that 200. So I've now got minus 200 to plus 200 at four and 20. Escape. Escape again, because I've finished with that. This unit has the alarm menus. If, it, if the alarm card is fitted, then you will see this part of the menu. If you don't see this, then the alarms are not fitted. And in that, we have all of the standard features that you would expect of a good quality relay. These are transistor outputs, remember, because it's an intrinsically safe product. So there's no dry contacts. So we have enable, we have set point value. Is it a high or a low trip? 
Is it normally open or normally closed? Hysteresis is the scaling value where you wish the product, you wish the alarm to reset after it's come back within limits. Then we have delay, so we can also have set a time delay. So to avoid sort of fluctuations, small fluctuations triggering alarms. And then we can also silence, you can press a button to then silence the alarm if a sounder was connected, so an operator can then think what's going on in the process. And also you can have the digits flashing when you have an alarm. Again, that's a feature that you can turn off. Uh, we're back to the beginning. So that's the alarm channels. Of course, there will be, so there's always a two channel alarm on Beaker products, this is an option. And so you have the same configuration again for the second channel. Next feature is access set point. So ACSP. By the way, all of these terms are fully explained in the Beaker manual. You can look at it in depth through good descriptions, or we have a quick reference two page uh, document that is shipped with the product. If you want the full manual, go to beaker.co.uk, look for the product in downloads, and then you can read um, the full, full instructions. So access set point is where the operator can change the set point of the alarm, but nothing else in the configuration. It saves all of the configuration. Um, C and P is where you could have on that P button in normal operation, current or the percentage. Tower here, you would turn on or off the weighing function. Code, all products go out without a security code. Once you have configured the product, please set a security code. It then protects the unit and the process from any inadvertent changes. Um, remember to jot it down somewhere as well. Write it on the back of the product or in a safe place. Um, if you lose the code, please contact Beaker and we'll help you out. And then we have reset. So this is the last feature of the menu. Think about Alt Control Delete. This is Reset resets every feature to factory defaults. So if you find yourself not sure of what's being configured or uncertain of what's going on in the process, then you can use the reset to put everything back to, to standard. Um, I will just press E, so I'm coming out now and it's told us it's going to save the data. I'm at 16 milliamps, so if I set it to 12, So I'm now midway, I should be about zero, I'm 50% there. And if I go back to, to four milliamps, I should come back to minus 200. So we have at four milliamps, minus 200. At 20 milliamps, we have plus 200. And all the various settings have been saved. To go then back to the reset, we can then reset. It's asking me to confirm. And I have to put in, uh, it's asking me, am I sure? Am I sure I really want to reset? So we go to number five, because it also looks like an S. Program through. We then need a lowercase u. Then we need a lowercase r. And then we need an E. And then press escape. It's clearing the memory. And we're now back to test screen and then to default zero to 100. I could spend a lot longer looking at all the various features, but hopefully that will give you an overview of the depth of features of Beaker products. There's more information in manuals. 
There's more information from the uh, Beaker team and from our channel partners around the world. Thank you very much for your time.